Hey guys, it's Kassara, and today I'm going to be talking about all the series that I want to finish in 2020. So in yesterday's video, I talked about my fantasy book series challenge, which is basically all of the fantasy book series that I want to start in 2020. But today we're going to go through all of the series, not just fantasy, but all of the series that I definitely want to try and finish in 2020. If you missed the last video that I just mentioned, I will link that up in the cards for you guys. In this video, I kind of broke it up into four different categories. The first is the YA series that I want to finish in 2020. I'm going to go through those really quickly because there's not that many of them. And I think that I'll finish them pretty quickly as well in like the beginning of the year. And then I have the three categories of adult books that I want to finish in 2020. The first is the non-fantasy category. And then I have two fantasy categories, the fantasy maybes and the fantasy definitely. So the fantasy maybes are series that I really want to try and finish in 2020. Don't really see it happening though. Potentially, I might not even finish those series, but I do want to try at least to finish them or at least continue on with them in 2020. And the fantasy definitely are basically my priorities, the fantasy series that I'm going to prioritize and hopefully I will actually finish them in 2020. I will put timestamps in the description if you guys want to jump around a little bit. First of all, we're going to get to all of the YA series that I'm planning on finishing in 2020. So the first YA series that I'm planning on finishing in 2020 is the Six of Crows duology by Leigh Bardugo, which includes Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom. So this series is one that I started in 2019. I read Six of Crows in 2019. It was one of the books that was voted for in one of my TBR polls and I really, really enjoyed it a lot more than I was expecting to. I love the atmosphere of this world it gives me very like Mistborn meets Gentleman Bastard vibes which is not something I've ever gotten from a YA series before which I really like so I really enjoy that and I like how deep that Lee Bardugo gets into the characters I gave Six of Crows 4.5 stars and I'm definitely excited to continue on with Crooked Kingdom unfortunately it's not on my January TBR but I will be getting to it probably in the first half of the year the next series I'm a little less optimistic about and that's the Daughter of Smoke and Bone series by Lainey Taylor which includes Daughter of Smoke and Bone Days of Blood and Starlight and dreams of gods and monsters. So I read the first two books in this series, Daughter of Smoking Bone and Days of Blood and Starlight. I haven't yet gotten to Dreams of Gods and Monsters. Last year, one of my goals was to read this trilogy in 2019 because of the Shrine to Juma duology, which I read in 2018 and really, really love. And I did read the first two books in the series. I read Daughter of Smoke and Bone. I enjoyed it. I thought it was good. I didn't love it as much as I wanted to, but I did still really love the writing style. So I decided to move on to Dreams of Gods and Monsters. Uh, I've been holding the wrong book the whole time. So I decided to move on to Days of Blood and Starlight, and unfortunately, I did not like it as much as I was hoping to. I really, really wanted to love Days of Blood and Starlight, but it has kind of like a dual plot going on. There is the regular plot of the story, which is like in present day, and then there's this history of what happened in the past, which is like about 10% of the plot. It's not a whole lot of it, but I was really, really interested in the history and what happened in the past. And I was really, really bored by what was happening presently. So 90% of the book I was really, really bored by. And the 10% of the book that I was actually intrigued by was a very, very small part of the plot. So I ended up not liking it as much as I wanted to. And I ended up giving it 3.5 stars. That being said, I do want to finish the series. I want to see how it ends. A lot of times the last book in the series really Really makes the series for me so I will be reading Dreams of Gods and Monsters at some point this year and hopefully I'll end up liking this one more than the first two. The next series that I'm planning on finishing in 2020 is The Illuminate Files by Amy Coffin and Jay Kristoff which includes Illuminate, Gemini, and Obsidio. So this series I started because of the Tome Infinity and Beyond Readathon. I wanted to read more sci-fi, which is why I started the series, which I read Illuminate during the month of September. And I ended up really, really loving it a lot more than I was expecting to. I gave Illuminate four stars. I hadn't really expected to like it very much, but I really, really enjoyed it. It's about two characters that are on two different spaceships fleeing this planet that is under attack, basically. And they communicate with each other between the spaceships. There's tons of political stuff going on and they have an really interesting relationship and I like kind of like the atmosphere of the books I just feel like really really works with this series and I've been planning on reading Gemina and Obsidio for a while now and I'm really really hoping to finish them early in 2020. Gemina is actually on my January TBR so hopefully I'll get to it in January and hopefully I'll like it as much as I did Illuminae because this series is not one that I expected to like but I'm really happy that I've liked it so far. And the last series is one that I really hadn't thought that I'd be putting on this list but the more I think about it the more and more I want to read it and that is is the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J Mass, which includes Throne of Glass, Crown of Midnight, Heir of Fire, Queen of Shadows, Empire of Storms, Tower of Dawn, and Kingdom of Ash. So this series is one that I've been quite reluctant to read just because 
like about five years ago or so, I read the first book in the series, Throne of Glass, which I really, really didn't like. But mind you, five years ago, I was in like a massive reading slump and I didn't like anything that I was reading. And I also know that, that Throne of Glass, the first book in the series, is probably the worst book in the series. There are a lot of other books in the series that everyone seems to really, really love, especially Air of Fire. I've heard really, really good things about it, which is the next book in the series for me to read. I read Current of Midnight because of my poll to give a series a second chance and I was surprised by how much I actually liked it. I didn't love it. It's not one of my favorite books of all time and there were definitely a lot of things about it that I found problematic but I did enjoy Crown of Midnight a lot more than I was expecting to and I ended up giving that one 3.5 stars so I plan to continue on with the series because I've heard it gets really good especially towards the later books so I'm excited to see how that goes. And this is probably one of the only ones that I don't think I'll finish like early on in the year. I do plan to at least get to Air of Fire, the third book in that series, hopefully in January. So now we're going to move on to the adult series that I'm hoping to finish in 2020. And we're going to start with the series that are not fantasy series. The first series on this list is The Kingsbridge Trilogy by Ken Follett, which includes Pillars of the Earth, World Without End, and Column of Fire. So I read the first book in the series, Pillars of the Earth, in 2019. I picked it up like on a complete whim and I absolutely loved it. This is a historical fiction that's set in 12th century England and the first book in the series is about building a church which doesn't sound particularly interesting but I feel like the description completely underrates the book. The book is so good. It follows a very wide cast of characters and has a lot of social and political commentary that's really interesting and the way the scenes are written they're written like a thriller novel even though the content of the scenes are not necessarily all that thrilling they feel thrilling because of the way that they're written and I really love all of the politics that is involved in the first book in the series so I'm really excited to continue on with the next two books in this series. World Without End is set in the same town it's a century or so later and it's following the ancestors of the characters in the first book in the series and then Column of Fire is a few hundred years later than that and it sounds like it's following a couple. I don't know exactly that much about either of them but I kind of want to go into these blind and I'm definitely really excited for them. So the next series on this list is the Expanse series by James S.A. Corey, which includes Leviathan Wakes, Caliban's War, Abaddon's Gate, Cibola Burn, Nemesis Games, Babylon's Ashes, Persephilus Rising, and Tiamat's Wrath. So this series, I've actually read the first six novels in the series, all the ones that you see up here. I still have to read Persephilus Rising and Tiamat's Wrath, which came out last year, which I'm really, really excited to get to these books. So this series is a hard sci-fi series, and if you've been watching my channel at all, you've probably heard me talk about the series because it is fantastic. I absolutely love it. So this series is set in a time period in which Earth has been able to colonize Mars and some of the outer belt, but is still not able to do any deep space travel. So there aren't any Earth-like planets in which humans have colonized, but they have colonized some other aspects of space. So there's this really intense political situation because you have the earthlings, basically us, who look like regular humans and live pretty sheltered lives in comparison to the Martians and the Belters. So you have kind of like these big powers that are kind of at odds with each other. And then throw in the proto molecule, which is this alien thing that does like really horrific things to human bodies and like tries to do a bunch of things and no one really knows what it is or why it's doing the things that it's doing. None of the entities really want to call aliens without really knowing that it's aliens so they're just assuming it's one of the other powers trying to declare war basically. All of these humans are just squabbling and fighting with each other when there's just this bigger alien thing looming over the plot of the story and I absolutely love this setup. It also gets really really deep into the characters in this series and I really love that aspect of it. I definitely really really enjoy this series and plan on continuing it in 2020 and hopefully finishing it. And the last series in this category is the Three Body Problem Trilogy by Six and Lou, which includes The Three Body Problem, The Dark Forest, and Death's End. So this series is a sci-fi series that was originally translated from Chinese. It is very mysterious and I love that aspect of the series. It starts out like kind of with a mystery of like this weird thing that's happening, but there's also a really interesting structure to it because it has the outside sort of plot line of what's going on. And then there's also this video game and there's a plot line following this video game and the video game has excellent world building. I absolutely love it. And it kind of gives us hints at what may be to come for the series. And I really, really enjoy that. 
So far, I've read The Three Body Problem, and I definitely hope to get to the second and third books in this series in 2020. So now we're going to move on to the fantasy series that I'm planning on finishing in 2020. First, we're going to start with the fantasy maybes, the ones that I'm hoping that I can finish in 2020, but I'm not all as optimistic about. So the first series on this list is The Broken Earth Trilogy by N.K. Jemisin, which includes The Fifth Season, The Obelisk Gate, and The Stone Sky. So this is a post-apocalyptic fantasy in which some people have the ability to like control the environment and the environment is kind of like breaking and the, like the land is shattering and things like that are happening and these people are able to help and save the people around them but if they do that then they are discovered and are hunted for their abilities definitely a very interesting concept i read the first book in this series the fifth season in 2019 and i'm gonna be honest you guys don't remember much of it so i did enjoy it i gave it four stars since i don't remember that much about it i'm gonna have to reread it in order to move on with the other books in the series i do plan on getting to these in 2020 but i'm gonna have to reread the first book first before i can get to the other books in this series the next series i'm hoping to finish in 2020 is the nevernight chronicle by jay kristoff which includes nevernight god's grave and dark dawn so this series i started last year i started with nevernight and i really really hoped to like it because if you guys have seen a booktube at all then you've probably heard of nevernight it is super super hyped on booktube and everyone seems to love it i didn't i really didn't like it as much as i was hoping to it's about assassins and it kind of like the first book follows like a school for assassins but the thing is while i really like the world building and i actually think it was a really good plot i really didn't like the characters and the tone of the book really really turned me off from it because it has some really dark themes but the tone of the book is kind of joking and it just kind of contrasted with the actual themes of what it was trying to explain i just really didn't feel like it matched at all so it really turned me off from the story that being said i'm still interested in seeing where it's going and i really enjoy the world building so i want to see more of that so i do plan on continuing on with god's grave and hopefully i'll like that one and i'll be able to get to dark dawn as well the next series that i want to try and finish is the Dragon Riders of Pern series by Anne McCaffrey. So the actual Dragon Riders of Pern series has a lot more books than the three that I'm holding up, but these are the three that I've read in the past that I actually own. There's a lot more books in the series, but I'm not going to try and get to talking about all of them right now. But the first trilogy in the series includes Dragon Flight, Dragon Quest, and The White Dragon. So this series is a huge, huge series, which is why I'm not overly optimistic about finishing it in 2020, but I am going to try and at least read more in this series. These these three books I've actually already read but I don't remember very much about them because I read them a really long time ago except for Dragonflight which I've recently reread so I'm gonna have to reread Dragon Quest and The White Dragon before I continue on with the rest of the series but I'm definitely really excited to do that. This series takes place on a different planet in which there is this kind of this star nearby that drops this red dust onto the planet and the dust eats all organic matter but the humans have been able to make an alliance with dragons that are native to that planet and are kind of able to like destroy that dust so it has some really interesting elements blend sci-fi and fantasy together i consider it a fantasy series just because dragons but there's enough history and stuff that you can might think maybe they're sci-fi dragons so i enjoyed like that setup of it and this is one series that i've been meaning to read for a really long time and just haven't gotten around to it so i'm definitely excited to get to it in 2020. and the last series in this category is the dark tower series by stephen king which includes the Gunslinger, The Drawing of Three, The Wastelands, Wizard and Glass, Wolves of the Kala, Song of Susanna, and The Dark Tower. So this series is one that I've been very should I, should I not sort of with it just because Stephen King has not always been an author that I've wanted to read. Last year I read two books by him that I ended up really really loving and because of that I want to continue on with this series because I read Pet Cemetery and The Shining both of which I really really love so I want to read more of his books but one of the first books that I actually read by Stephen King, The Gunslinger, which I did not enjoy. Like it is probably one of my least favorite books that I've ever read. But I've also heard that The Gunslinger is like the worst book in the series and that Wizard and Glass is one of the most highly rated books ever. And I do want to get to this one eventually at least. I've also heard that the series kind of ties together a lot of his other books that are standalones, which I think is interesting. So it's another one of those series where if 
you like squint at it, it could be like not a fantasy series, but it is still like solidly in the realm of fantasy. I want to get more into it and I want to see what all the hype is about, especially with Wizard and Glass because I've heard really, really good things about it. Hoping to get to these in 2020. And now we're going to get to all of the fantasy series that I'm definitely going to finish in 2020, or at least the ones that I'm going to prioritize to try and finish in 2020. The first series on this list is The Witcher series by Andrei Sapkowski, which includes The Last Wish, Sword of Destiny, Blood of Elves, Time of Contempt, Baptism of Fire, The Tower of Swallow, and The Lady of the Lake. So this series obviously is very popular right now because of the TV series that just came out and I really, really want to watch it. So I want to finish the books before I watch it. I've already finished the first four books that you see up there. The next book on the series that is on my January TBR is Baptism of Fire, which I've heard is one of the best books in the series. So I'm super excited to get to it. This series follows Geralt of Rivia, who is a witcher, which basically means he hunts monsters. So far, I have like zero complaints for the series. I enjoy them. They're a solidly good fantasy series. I love the world building. I love the writing style. I love all of the characters. The plots are not quite to my liking yet, but I'm hoping that in Baptism of Fire that they'll get better and I'll hopefully I'll love them more in Baptism of Fire, but so far like it's a solidly four star series for me and I really enjoy it. So yes, I'm really excited to continue out the series and hopefully I can finish it early on in the year. So the next series on this list I feel like is not going to be a surprise to anybody. And that's all the books in The First Law World by Joe Abercrombie, which includes The Blade Itself, Before They Are Hanged, The Last Argument of Kings, Best Served Cold, The Heroes, Red Country, and A Little Hatred. So I've already read four of the books that are on this list. I've read the First Law Trilogy as well as Best Served Cold. And in January I have on my TBR The Heroes. So this series is fantastic. The first Law Trilogy, the first three books here were my favorite books that I read in 2019. Like they were by far my favorite series that I read in 2019 and I'm really really excited to get more of this world. Best of Curled, The Heroes, and Red Country are all standalone novels in this world and then the new series that is coming out starts with A Little Hatred which I'm super super excited to get to. So I'm definitely really excited for this because Joe Abercrombie is one of like my new favorite authors because he writes like dark gritty fantasy fantasy with very very well thought out and developed unlikable characters that you can't help but love. So I love that aspect of these books and I'm really really excited to continue on. I will definitely be finishing this in 2020. The next books on this list is The Stormlight Archives by Brandon Sanderson which includes The Way of Kings, Words of Radiance, and Oathbringer. So this series is Brandon Sanderson's like huge series. I absolutely love it so far. I read the first book in the series The Way of Kings in 2019 and I had planned to finish both Words of Radiance and Oathbringer in 2019 and unfortunately I'm still Still currently in the middle of Words of Radiance, but I do plan on finishing that one soon and I'm really really excited for the series. The fourth book in the series has been announced, Rhythm of War, which will be coming out on November 17th I believe, which I'm super super excited for. So my goal for the series is to finish Words of Radiance and Oathbringer before Rhythm of War comes out because I want to read that as soon as it comes out because the series is fantastic. I want to read all of it. So yeah, I'm really, really excited for this one. The next series I'm planning on finishing in 2020 is The Gentleman Bastard series by Scott Lynch, which includes The Lies of Locke Lamora, Red Seas Under Red Skies, and The Republic of Thieves. So I read the, the first book in the series, The Lies of Locke Lamora, last year, and I really, really loved it. I gave it five stars, but it's one of those books that I feel like I really have to digest and reread before continuing on with the series just because every single detail in the book seems relevant to the plot of the story and to the story overall. So I really, really want to reread it before I continue on with the series, which is the only reason I haven't continued on with it yet because it's fantastic and I really, really want to see what happens next, but I haven't gotten around to rereading it yet. It's on my TBR to reread in January. So hopefully I will be able to reread it in January and really like get more into the world and just like all of the details of the story before moving on to Red Seas Under Red Skies. This series follows like a gang of thieves basically called the Gentleman Bastards. The main character really being Locke Lamora who is kind of like the head of this group and it's very very well done and I absolutely love it. And the last series on this list is probably the most intimidating and the most ambitious. It is definitely going to be my top priority in 2020 and that is Malazan A Book of the Fallen by Steven Erickson which includes Gardens of the Moon, Dead House Gates, Memories of Ice, House of Chains, Midnight Tide, 
Hides, The Bone Hunters, Reaper's Gate, Toll the Hounds, Dust of Dreams, and The Crippled God. So this series is a 10 book series and they're all epic. The series is epic, the world is epic, the plot is epic, and I'm really, really excited for it. This series has such a great fan base, and I'm really, really excited to get further into the series. Last year I read Gardens of the Moon, and I'm currently reading Dead House Gates, which I've heard is one of the best books in the series, and is really where people like start to love this series, so I'm really, really excited to continue on with that. And I'm planning on reading at least one of these every month, so in the month of January I'm planning on finishing Dead House Gates, and hopefully if I do finish Dead House Gates, I'll be able to add Memories of Ice to my February TBR. So I'm really, really excited for the series, and hopefully I can finish it in 2020. So those are all the books that I have on this list. Let me know down in the comments comments if you're planning on reading any of these series or if you've read any of these series I would love to discuss with you guys also let me know what are some of the series that you're planning on finishing in 2020 I post videos every Sunday Wednesday and Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern time so consider subscribing I also post bonus videos so if you want to be notified as soon as I upload you could click that little bell icon if you like this video please give it a big thumbs up to support my channel all social media links are in the description down below thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time bye